Hello and thank you for watching. This is a talk that I gave last year at the excellent web marketing festival We Make Future in Italy and which I am doing all over again for everybody's benefit with the organization's written permission. My aim is to help other SEOs, marketers and possibly business owners to understand the challenges that every brand faces whenever they uh, operate internationally. Um, so that you, they are not a part of an international fairly story, just like Walmart was many years ago and Airbnb not such a long time ago. There are four main ideas that I would like you to take away from this, uh, from this talk. The first one is know who you are, what you've got, your, um, your um, values, your products, your services. See whether you can actually take all that into your target market and be successful in there using technology sensibly so that technology is not a hindrance to your business and of course keep doing it because success just doesn't come overnight. Seth Godin uh, mentions or rather referred to a uh, something that we have all faced sometime during our working lives which is the fact that we may have a fantastic idea and there is a lack of um, will to execute that idea and that happens this backlash that does happen very often in businesses sometimes for a good reasons sometimes it's just for the fear of uh, wasting the time and resources on something that hasn't really uh, brought any any benefits however i would caveat all this with um just by asking what ideas do we need to implement? Because there are so many ideas that we can implement. We can have one very good idea, but then uh, there might be many other things that we can implement as well to be successful in international markets. So we need to understand what ideas uh, they are. Uh, while we make sense of any developments that are happening right now, for example, an artificial intelligence tools, right? and so that we can connect the dots between our brand and our audiences in international markets to be successful. Because we don't really know what the future holds. I mean, I haven't got a working crystal ball. If you do have one, perhaps you can contact me later and maybe we can, we can discuss, right? Because uh, my Kintsugi repaired crystal ball just doesn't work. On a more... Um, on a more serious note, we definitely need to keep pressing on uh, to make a future. Uh, we need to embrace it. We need to embrace all those um, all those uh, developments, such as artificial intelligence uh, tools that I mentioned earlier. But we also need to look at our own presence, uh, our own brand, um, how we stack up to um, you know in the in this uh, in this complex and in this um, uh, in this uh, competitive landscape that we are operating in because yeah this the complex the complexity of this um, context is going uh, increase on the increase all the time right it's increasing uh, there's plenty of new customers uh, or new possible customers, as we will see in a minute. Technology is getting a lot more complicated to uh, partially meet the demands of a, a more technology savvy, savvy um, type of uh, customer and user. And of course, there's cultural diversity, which is now given the right uh, uh, the right importance, uh, the importance that this got, but also poses um, different issues for uh, for brands, for companies who need to understand how to embrace that cultural diversity. So as of last year, uh, now there will be a few more. Uh, there were 7.8 billion people, and I like to uh, to put things always into context. That's why I I, I start with this. Um, as of this year, actually, these numbers have already increased a little bit, and so we've got 5.35 
billion internet users worldwide. And a lot of those are actually 5.04 um, or 5, I think, are social media users who may have an internet account, sorry, and, um, a social media account and may use it or may not. We, we don't know, but the fact is that they do have an, a social media account. Now, with the fact that um, people have got more interested in technology and the internet, the number of websites have increased, has increased over the years, over the time, over time. Although some of them probably are um, not um, active, um, the fact is, as, fact is that there are a lot and there is bound to be a lot more new websites um, possibly from brands who are actually competitors of ours right um, when it comes to users users uh, searches uh, three to four times searches three to four times a day which is a lot this is an estimation obviously not everybody will do that every day but as an estimation three to four times a day kind of make up for what we call cognitive overload which is basically the um a huge amount of messages that cannot be processed at any given time because uh, we are or or our users are exposed to five to 5k to 10k messages every day and some of those messages will actually come from you and your competitors and so many other messages will be actually coming from um, from other from other brands as well and the fact is that um, this makes it really difficult for brands to differentiate but this is what would they need to do they need to pay more and more attention these days to differentiation because it does happen in all sectors, B2B, B2C, or even full cycle. This is B2C, uh, where we can see that um, the interest in shopping online keeps increasing over time. And so even buying close borders, if you see my, my pointer here, uh, you, you'll see here that um, people like Belgians and many other um, nationalities within the European Union are quite keen on buying cross borders because they know they they can get huge options in there uh, for the products and services that they that they are looking for so they they just they just go and and research and, and buy definitely buy even in Latin America things are flourishing which is very good um, from every point of view in terms of b2b things are slightly different than it used to be before because B2B buyers have more choices and it's a lot easier for them to research their options. Whereas they used to be a lot more tied to their connections beforehand, right now it's totally different. However, a recent, a very recent study um, indicates that um, 51% of B2B buyers think that their vendors, the people, they, the companies they buy, they buy from, um, are not aware of all the frictions that they have to um, experience whenever they buy from them. So basically, what it means is that a basic e-commerce website or any website just doesn't suffice you need to keep optimizing for your users and now all this happens while we are trying to make sense of our um, very changing and very confusing landscape which is moving so terribly fast so we've got uh, cultural diversity that uh, mentioned earlier uh, new technologies as well that are also affecting search. Yeah, search engines are actually using artificial intelligence, and that is making things um, perhaps slightly more complicated for for brands, right? Um, so we have to think about possible recession as well, and laws and regulations that are always um, coming. Uh, 
perhaps too late sometimes, but they are still there and we need to pay attention to them, such as the latest DMA, Digital Markets Acts, and uh, a few other um, acts that we need to uh, pay attention to. And of course, all of these things are making the headlines. However, we also experience shiny objects, things that distract us from our uh, path to success, right? For example, artificial intelligence can be a shiny object as well. So this is what I meant earlier when I uh, mentioned that technology needs to um, work on your behalf rather than being a hindrance to your brand. So what can brands do at this moment in time, as I said earlier, differentiate at all times? I mean, this is marketing 101. It is nothing new, but now they have to do it a lot more often um, and pay more attention to it than before because competition is huge. And also competition is huge. And uh, um, well, there are other variables in the environment that makes things um, very complicated. So if you start by looking at the basics, at your brand, what you are doing, where you stand, the position of what you are who you are at this moment in time, what you need to fix, perhaps what do you need what you need to enhance after all, right? Perhaps things to change and make things easier in terms of differentiation, right? Um, testing, testing something new can be very useful. For example, artificial intelligence um, tools uh, so that we know exactly how to use them and when to use them. So that is why you can have your piece of international cake or a cannoli if you are in Italy, which are lovely by the way. So now, how can we get those opportunities? How can we uh, obtain those opportunities? Japanese people do have this um, saying very similar to the Stoic philosophy, Greek, uh, Stoic Greek philosophy, shikata gadai, which basically means let go. Let go of everything that is not important, that is not under your own control. So what this means for brands is laser focus on what you can actually do at this moment in time and then build up for other things that you may be able to do a bit later so that you are better prepared for the future, any risks, anything that may happen in the future, because we don't really know what is happening in the future. So it's best to kind of live in the present with an eye in the future. Um, so yeah, just uh, do what's in your hands and what is in your hands is your digital assets, your websites, your uh, mobile applications, if you do have them. So for that reason, what you need to do is to have a clear set of goals and plans to achieve them. Do not neglect your website nor your SEO because they are going to be incredibly important for your international expansion. Collaborate with others because things are getting complex, more complex by the day. And maybe just uh, involving others, counting on others can actually be useful for you to solve the many little or big issues that you come across, particularly if you are um, operating internationally. I mean, how do you, uh, how do Austrians feel about this and that? Sometimes. If you ask somebody in there, you can actually get this fixed and sorted in a minute. And of course, mind the cultural diversity. Lastly, the bonus point of this, believe it or not, if you keep optimizing, you will actually help the planet as well. So now, how to start? I always start taking a project management approach to to this. Obviously, this is a um, much bigger topic that would take us a lot longer than we've got. Uh, and so, but what I would say is that um, a, a project management approach will actually help you to piece the pieces of the puzzle together, will help you to identify those ideas I was talking at the very beginning, those things that you can implement to either fix or to enhance something. 
so that um, you can uh, so that you can be successful. So for the for all this, just very briefly, establish your needs, your company needs, your goals, decide on actions, plan for those actions, execute and prioritize very well, measure and of course implement at all times. Yeah. Now, the data gathering is super important. This is one of the reasons why um, international market research and marketing um, and user research as well is very important for every brand who wishes to expand internationally. And you need to keep an eye on the things that you identify with a similar study to this because um, things can actually change. So. Be mindful of that. Do some research, first of all, and keep an eye on it. Keep an eye on those aspects that you identify as a result of this research. Something that I find really peculiar sometimes, um, I've worked in companies where they didn't feel comfortable operating in certain markets. So if you are going to operate um, internationally, just make sure that you wish to do that, that your company wishes to do that, that is um, in their vision to do it, and that they wish to um, operate in a specific market. So France, the US, the UK, Spain, Greece, etc., etc. Et Just make sure that you have that very clear in your head, because sometimes it's not as clear as it may look like. Now, your website, as I said earlier, is in your hands. And for that reason, your SEO needs to be pristine, needs to be super important because your SEO is the, um, it is, is the channel that will actually make your brand flourish. And it goes underneath every single uh, piece of online activity that you do. SEO is definitely not that. Uh, it's just a joke for those uh, who are not uh, familiar with it is a joke that we tend to like to, um, to, 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 to make. But even John Mueller from, um, from Google says that a well, a well optimized website, which is findable, technically sound, etc, etc, is still necessary. So websites are definitely not going away. Now, some pitfalls to avoid which I can group them into four groups. Not planning, not researching target markets and users, not localizing, which is not to do with translating, and not having a technically sound site. That happens at all times. And, um, and it affects, that affects everything within the website from a technical perspective, um, technical on page, um, even CRO things, every CRO, CRO aspects, yeah? So just plan, research, and make sure that you don't uh, forget your website. Now, one of the reasons why um, international websites fail is because they don't use the appropriate URL structure. And this is to do with planning very well, because you need to understand what resources you've got to implement this URL structure and to maintain it. Because some structures are, like for example, subdomain, uh, subdomains, sorry, are, are a lot more difficult, or perhaps more difficult, not a lot more, more difficult to set up and maintain, right? Um, I'll let you, check this in your own time, but uh, yeah, it's all about resources. It's all about thinking what's about what we need to do or what we can do and uh, yeah, and then implement it. Now, in this day and age, users and customers need to feel in control of the uh, content that they consume. So if I am a US person, Okay, somebody from the US in, in Spain. I can't speak Spanish, but I'm trying. And I want to check something on um, this website, Sandesk. And I am happen, I'm happening to be using a, um, 
a laptop which is set up with uh, to the Spanish market, then chances are that I will get the Spanish version of Sendesk rather than the US version. And that is deeply annoying. And for brands, it's a lottery in terms of ranking, in terms of visibility. So just make sure that you actually, yeah, you actually take this into account because users need to be in control or at least feel in control. So just give them the choice. Don't do not make this make it any difficult. Um, these are some very good examples of um, of that which I have found, Autodesk and Zara. As a result of not planning and not researching well, or perhaps sometimes not even counting on the um, actual uh, knowledge um, internally, uh, brands um, do not implement a an HRF, HRF lang uh, properly, HRF lang implementation properly. So they uh, they um, occasionally uh, use irrelevant codes, such as for example LA, which I remember this conversation very well with with John Mueller. LA for which doesn't stand for Los Angeles or Latin America. It stands it stands for Laos, the country. So you have to think very, very carefully about uh, about codes, about syntax, and about everything. This is what happened to a former client um, before they implemented my recommendations. They were targeting Japanese users everywhere in the world, the UK, Mexico, um, everywhere, really. But but why? I mean. Why target Japanese speakers in Japan, perhaps? And then if you want to target Mexican, Mexican people just um, do the appropriate um, fixes and uh, apl apply the, the, the actual um, the actual tactics that you need to apply. Now, when it comes to localization, and I will talk a bit more about this later, make sure that you localize everything including currency and customer service because if i am on an english website or websites where where they use english and then i find a spanish customer service or italian or from any other uh, any other um any other um uh, nationality i may think that perhaps they can't speak english so i may feel it's slightly um a slightly um yeah, insecure about using this website and this service. This is Kat Kidston, uh, whose localization failed very, very badly last year. And not just the localization, there were a few other things that actually um, failed. And that gave, that normally gives the impression that I can't trust the, um, website that I intend to buy from. And in this case, Kath Kidston was undergoing some um, uh, audits uh, from a economic uh, point of view to try and solve the business, to try and save the business. But um, remember Conway's law, right? So whatever it is that we see from the outside might mirror what is happening from the inside. So you don't really want to give the bad impression, a bad impression to your possible customers. Now, if you are going to a, um, an, another market, to an international market, you need to get local ranking signals. So why not collaborating with PR people, right? So that you can get you or help you get those links. Um, documentation is really important. Um, there's plenty of documentation published by Google. We have never had as much uh, documentation as we are having right now. So please make sure that you go and read it because it's there for you. Now, tech stack. So important for SEO as well. So um, consider updating CMS if you are going internationally, making sure that your uh, CMS will help you um, with international structures um, and use the 
the tech stack that you actually in the tech that you need because i've been to, to companies with um very big dreams but they didn't have enough um technology nor people to actually manage it and the other way around as well yeah um but just make sure that there is a balance between what you need and how to get there so if you need to go internationally just make sure that you have your um uh, cms that um that uh, that can help you with international structure website structure uh, use even a tms trans translation management system if you are going to be translating or localizing um, internally very often etc etc and that goes for that's the same with same goes for um, artificial intelligence tools so there's no need to peacefully burn routers just like it says in here on this um on these pamphlets uh, just make sure that you know how to use it and you use it properly now localization i really wanted to um, come to this because that is a big this is a big issue so if you are going internationally you need to understand these three concepts translation localization and transcreation because they are not the same you don't need to know the ins and outs of all of them but these are things that i found myself um, talking about and um, dispelling myths as well even outside work so let me just go through them translation is just an adapting the message as it says in here when you localize and what we do is localization and when you localize you adapt the experience which is rather different and then you've got transcreation transcreation is um making sure that it doesn't happen what kfc experienced with their finger licking gear campaign a few years ago which basically it meant or it, it, it read in chinese something like eat your fingers off yeah you, you have to make sure that it reads properly in your target languages yeah because it's all about context it's not just the language it's also the context which can be super tricky to navigate for example uh, you might find this cartoon funny but then you might not even understand what you mean by Iron Man, what we mean by Iron Man, if you don't know about the competition, the sports competition. Um, linguists and uh, marketers can actually help you navigate those um, those contexts, uh, those aspects that make a, spe a specific context. Yeah. Strategy, strategy, tactics, technical aspects, language, etc., etc. Because users are different. I mean, all markets are different because users are different, um, and they are different in a, in different ways. <laughs> so basically, they search different. They show it in different ways. That's what I meant. So uh, users search differently, and. It, that it does depends on a variety of aspects such as for example digitization yeah if uh, if it's a, if a customer is in a in a, a market where digitalization is not um, as high perhaps not as mature as in any um, it's in many other countries such as France for example or the UK you may find that users do search for something else um, apart from brands. So they may they may search for customer service, which is exactly what happened in here. Yeah, I found it very interesting that um, these brands, not former clients by the way, not my clients at the moment, um, the, but these brands uh, were ranking for things like customer service. Um, on top instead of ranking for a product or something else right that's that is really interesting of course and of course the number of searches will definitely uh, be uh, dependent on the uh, number of people who are uh, in that in that country the 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 actual size of the market 
but even within a market, things are actually very different. Um, so people from the north might actually find that certain aspects are that they respond better from um, to certain aspects, certain, for example, certain um, pictures, uh, certain types of language than in the south of the same country. Yeah, it's just, just a matter of um, it's just a matter of um, testing and collaborating as well with PPC because PPC can actually help you quite a lot um, in actually trying to understand trying to understand um, certain nuances in terms of language and vocabulary. And of course, use the grammar and vocabulary correctly when localizing. Yeah at all times, because it can be a question of online reputation. This is not about uh, language, it's more about showing in your target market what you want to show. Uh, and, and then, if, I mean, if I am looking for this brand uh, or for something that this brand does, I don't really want to find the cookie message in there. It's, it's, just, uh, it's, just, it's just not appealing, really. Be careful with that. Um, UI and UX need to be adapted as well. This is the German version of the Xbox when it was launched back in 2022, which caused quite a stir back then. Yeah, think about think about this button going towards the edge of the uh, of the screen, and even as I have found out later, some of these German terms that they are using were not exactly well, not exactly the, the, the terms any German speaking person in Germany would actually uh, expect to find. Halo Infinite translation into Spanish is, is not, was not fantastic either. It should have said here something similar to left, but then uh, as in living. But it said something very different, right? Then accessibility as well. You have to think about accessibility uh, because in certain part, accessibility is important in every market at this moment in time because it's not just a matter of being a good person or a good or a bad person, a good brand or a bad brand. It's a matter of um, money as well because those people who don't find your website accessible and therefore may not be able to make a purchase or navigate easily, um, well, may actually take their business elsewhere. So think about this. And in certain um, countries, in certain markets, um, accessibility matters might be more in fashion, so to speak. People may talk about them a lot more or there might be laws against um, non-accessible websites. So think about contrast, think about um, all these issues, because there are technology, there is technology, the, the, sorry, technology that can help you out with, with all that, um, as it's happening now with, uh, with Sarah. Sarah is using this enterprise uh, technology, but you can use any, you can use even web aim to check about your accessibility uh, aspects um, so that you know exactly what to, uh, what to improve. Yeah. And then the bonus tips, I would say use internal search, not just for keyword research, but also to see what other people search and to try and uh, distinguish the nuances of the language in one um, in one market and another. Think about think about um, a website like Sandra's that has uh, different websites in, in, in Belgium and the, in the Netherlands. Uh, it can be very useful to see what people are searching in there, yeah? To find content gaps, for example, to assess long tail, categorization, and um, things like that, right? Uh, these are the examples that I have found. And as, as you can see, people do search very differently using the same the same terms in different in the different websites. You can see different uh, or different versions of the same website. Actually, uh, you can see how you can get uh, different different um, results. So then there's the collaboration aspect, which I have hinted throughout this 
presentation because we are not the only ones in the planet um, even within our own teams there might be neurodivergent people or people who may simply be an introvert may simply be people who may not easily give away many details for example the the why behind the numbers or details regarding the why behind the numbers at a meeting sometimes is difficult for people to explain themselves to to um, um to communicate um all the details that they need to communicate yeah because sometimes we with you we try to to say everything and sometimes what we are expecting is just a kind of top line communication but for certain aspects might be useful to uh, to go much deeper in detail and some people might actually find it difficult to identify um it's all to do with cultural habits uh, there are um, certain cultures particularly when you work um, uh, with international teams you know that certain cultures are a lot more direct and a lot more outspoken or perhaps they prefer starting with some kind of um, small talk um, whereas others prefer just going straight to the point yeah um, other aspects for example responsiveness i know in the uk uh, responsiveness is expected so just um, make sure make sure that you actually bear this in mind so yeah uh, the advantages the advantages is that you actually get um, get more information perhaps from these people if you uh, different types of people if you actually um, uh, make sure that you uh, bear in mind that um, there's different people some people behave differently yeah you can you can ask uh, you, you are perhaps marketing from uh, from the UK to the French market why not asking a French person for the latest news and latest bits and pieces that they care about because they can be very useful for your content strategy it's as simple as that yeah and yeah as I said earlier while optimizing for your websites you are also optimizing uh, for the planets you are helping the planet because look at this one search query is 1.4 uh, grams of co2 and that's quite a lot um cost of moving data is actually quite quite huge and i didn't expect um, cloud computing to be at the top of this list when it comes to co2 emissions i was just thinking perhaps uh, tobacco industry or uh, aviation but it's not it really is not it's cloud computing so keep making a technically sound website which is fast which is simpler to use uh, um, and logical as well yeah use uh, logical journeys and designs um, make sure that you understand that 4g and 5g are not available everywhere and so optimize for that use perhaps um, hosting providers that are carbon neutral or tools that do have policies um, in place to help the environment such as for example site pulp or site ground etc etc so yeah just uh, try and minimize uh, third party scripts just make sure that everything is um, tip top yeah that your your um your website is technically sound as um uh, john Mueller was saying in the quotes that i posted earlier yeah you can use so you, you can also use uh, your um this website and there are quite a few others as well to um calculate your car carbon footprint and uh, lastly laws and regulations because it also goes in terms of reputation you have to bear in mind quite a lot of things in terms of product regulation and website as well accessibility is one of them because brand brands can be definitely taken to court just like it happened to netflix in the us yeah for this reason because they didn't make their website accessible i think it was i can't remember what um the the actual aspect was but um yeah just to try and avoid going to court at all times um in terms of data collection we keep saying this all of the time in the um analytic circles make, make sure that 
your um, data is kept safe or customers' data is actually kept safe, for example, at a, at a website migration. Minimize user data collection. Don't ask for their shoe size if you don't need that, <laughs> because I have seen some brands doing that. Uh, make it easy at all times and do not assume that users will understand legally is because they will not. They will not make your legal pages, your uh, price, um, terms and conditions and everything easy to understand and also accessible. Yeah. Yeah. So some tips here. So, so for example, stay who you are and the purpose of your site, which is um, marketing 101, really. But it also has some legal implications. Um, so try not to mislead users. Yeah, state your delivery and returns uh, return policies again in a in a way that um, it is useful and it is understandable to your users. Yeah, the same for for prices. This is something that um, Sandra do very well. Uh, this price breakdown very clear, and uh, Power Planet do the same some do the same on their on their um uh, on their um price pages but also they clearly state prices and discounts which is really useful for everybody and will uh, save uh, one headache or another and also remember that cross border uh cross-border goals and services are not offered at the same terms not the same price for all okay Geo-blocking is not um, is not uh, allowed within the European Union. So, lastly, the takeaways: make sure that you use a project management approach just to help you uh, achieve your goals and uh, plan beforehand. Localize everything. Do not translate. Just localize. Localize. Make sure that you adapt the experience, and not just language, but everything else: currency, um, uh, customer service, etc., etc. Make sure that your website is technically sound, and also mind the legal aspects at all times, because it is really competitive at this moment in time. This is a crowded landscape and we need to be able to uh, deploy a good strategy and that is very well researched, that we are going to be measuring and uh, also make sure that you keep an eye on all those um, markets where you, uh, where you uh, operate. Yeah? So, just to, so, just, so that just your brand uh, is um, competitive and remains competitive. So my name is Montserrat Cano. I am working as an international SEO and digital marketing consultant, working with uh, global um, global brands. I'm also a university professor. I have contributed to books and uh, to many articles. And if you have liked this presentation and if it has inspired you and you think um, I can help you, uh, on your brand, please make sure that you contact me through my website. And if you have any questions, any questions whatsoever, just make sure th that you uh, send them to me. Grazie, thank you very much, arigato, merci, and well, obrigado.